one thing. Psalm 27 verse 4, one thing. This year, one thing, oh Lord. For one thing, take me to the next. One thing. One thing. You have 10 prayer points at the end of the year. How many answered? From one prayer point, you can get many. Somebody say amen. Knowing the power of focus. One of the greatest things that makes leaders to succeed in life is the strength of their focus. Somebody say the strength of focus. Say the power of focus. Amen. It is not the problem that matters. It is how you see the problem. It's what you are looking at in life. It's your imagination, your expectation. It is your reception. It is your ability to focus, to maintain your eyes, and to keep seeing the same thing at the same time. Amen. There's a difference between vision and focus. There's a difference between what vision and what focus. Okay, vision, without vision, the people perish. The people cast off restraint. You must have a vision in life. And there's no one here without a vision in life. It's your dream, it's your goal, it's your target, it's your assignment, it's what God wants you to do. But that has to remain your focus throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month, throughout the year. Once your eyes is off your focus, your eyes is off your vision, then you have lost focus. That is why so many fail in life, and many visions are not realized, and many dreams are aborted because the eyes are not steady. There are ailment in the eyes. Demons are attacking the eyes. There are demons that specialize in attacking your hand, that is for prosperity, attacking the feet, attacking your head, and there are some, their job is just to attack your eyes, that you are not focused. You are easily distracted. You are shifting here and there. But I pray, as you open your heart this morning to the Holy Ghost, may the Holy Ghost be the impactor of strength in your eyes in Jesus' name. It's called focal discipline. The Lord will train you how to maintain your eyes on one thing at a time. Not many things at a time to keep your eyes steady. Because that is what it takes to get your destination on time. You will not be distracted in this life. Your time will not be wasted in Jesus' name. Go to James chapter 1, verse 6 and 8 to 8. And let's all read together. James chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. James, amen. But let him, let's start from verse 5, amen. Let's start from verse 5. If any man what lack wisdom, let him what? Let him ask of God that giveth all men liberally and obraideth not, and it shall be given to him. You should ask God. If you know you lack something, you should ask God. But here the Bible said, how do you ask God? How do you ask God? How must you ask God? He said, let him ask what? In what? Faith. Go verse 6. Let's see the verse 6. Let him ask what? In what? In faith. Nothing what? Wavering. Not wavering. Which means, once you waver, you have disqualified your faith. How must you ask God? You must ask God nothing wavering, without wavering, without what? Wavering, without what? Wavering, focused, steady, specific, directed, that is fit. You are not wavering, 
You are not asking one today and then another one tomorrow. You don't know what you actually want. You don't know, actually know what you are actually asking. So faith is focus. Say faith is focus. Let him ask in faith. Not wavering. For either wavering is like what? It's like a wave or the what? Like a wave of the sea driven what? With the wind and thought. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Nothing wavering. Nothing wavering. Nothing wavering. Because if you waver, if you waver, if you waver, you are like what? The wave of the sea that is tossed and driven with the wind. And that is the case with so many people who have who lack focus in life. And it takes focal discipline to maintain focus because it's extremely delicate sometimes to maintain focus because the world is full of noises and destruction. The world is full of noises and destruction. So you wake up in the morning to go here, and in the night you find yourself there. What happened? Many people have said to themselves, how did I find myself here? No, it's lack of focus. How did this happen to me? It's lack of focus. They began with a vision, a journey. They end up somewhere else. It's lack of focus. How many of you can relate to people saying, I don't know what to say? I I I I I forgotten what I wanted to say. They are talking to you and suddenly they are forgotten what they had in mind. I mean if you can relate to that. Amen. That is lack of focus. Somebody will come in the morning and say, Oh, we I have forgotten where I'm going. They are gonna go somewhere, they are forgotten where they are going. I mean if you sometimes you are praying, you've been praying, you are praying, and suddenly you stop praying. Because your mind just got what? Distracted. You just got off the rail. You just were, you were, you went to pray for three hours. But you couldn't do three minutes. Because you now suddenly find yourself in the kitchen. Amen. But you actually started by prayer. You went to start to pray. Or you are in, busy, in the midst of prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father. Before you know it, you are now on your phone. You just you started praying, or you have something in mind you are talking to God about, but you just couldn't break through that prayer. So the devil will always attack your eyes. It's called attack. This is demonic. It's an attack on one's eyes to keep your fo- to, to to make sure that you don't focus in life because he knows the power of focus. He knows you will get it. If you are steadied with your eyes, it will come to you by law. Transformation, reception are all in the power of focus. I want to show you the story of Jacob. How Jacob used that principle to transfer Laban's world. He knew the power of focus. So he set the eyes of those cattle while they were conceiving, to look at a certain way. Because what you look is what is coming to you. What you are looking at will come to you. Your transformation is in your focus. That's what the Bible says, look unto Jesus. Amen. If you don't look, if you take your eyes away from Jesus, look at the wind. If you look at the wind, fear will come. It happened to Peter, right? You know the story of Peter, right? Master, can I come? He said, come. You know the story. Amen. He said, Master, can I come? Come. And he stepped on the water. And water became concretized. I mean, water became what? Concretized. Water became like plain floor. How? How can somebody step on the water, 
because he heard come and he looked unto Jesus who said come he looked unto Jesus who said what come. what was he standing on he was standing on the word it was the word come that he had connected to who said it that he was standing on. The power of his faith affected the waters underneath him. The power of his faith made water to sustain him. Now what changed? Suddenly he started to sink. He began to what? Sink. What changed? The wind is still the same. The water is still the same. Nothing changed in the physical. Nothing changed in the physical. Water is still the same. But this time around when Peter began to sink, the water couldn't hold him again. Everything that changed, changed inside Peter. Everything that affected the world underneath him, change inside him. His focus was lost. The wind took his focus. The devil distracted him. It took his eyes away from the ball. Your eyes will never be lost in Jesus' name. It took his eyes away from the goal, from Jesus. Your transformation is a product of your focus. Keep your eyes steady. Keep looking at the same thing, the same time. Don't worry. Don't look at mockers. Don't look at those who are making bigger money. Keep your eyes steady on where you are going. And you will arrive in Jesus' name. Let me hear a louder amen. Number one, lack of focus will result into poor planning. Poor choices bad spending and it also will lead you into wrong association when you love focus you find yourself in poor planning making poor choices bad spending and wrong association if you are going through any of those four today the problem is lack of focus in your life you are spending money anyhow because you love focus. You are in a wrong association because you love focus. You are making poor choices and making poor planning. You are not looking at nothing. You are just drifting. That will never be your portion. Somebody say amen. Number two, it leads to failure and delay and stagnation in vision. In vision. In vision. Many visions are in the cooler today because somebody has lost focus. It's not because God hasn't given you a good vision or God hasn't called you, but the enemy is attacking your eyes. May that be restored. To, may you be ill today in Jesus' name. And number three, unable to reach goals and targets. You started in January, believing God to reach a certain goal by September. And now it's September. Where are you? Check your focus. Number four, when life is blurry and it looks as if you are confused all the time or you are double-minded, you don't know what you actually want. You don't know what you actually want. You, can, you, you don't know exactly who should be your partner. You cannot make a right choices. You don't know whether it's this man, that man, that church, that church, that church. You don't know what to do. You, like you are confused. And life seems like it's blurry. It is because there's a problem with your power of focus. Number five. If you ever start always dealing with incompletion, inability to finish a project, we start, we don't finish. Somebody took your eyes away from the end goal. From the end goal. 
the prototype doesn't look like what you are finished with. It's because of lack of focus. Then inconsistencies and shifting here and there. They are also result of lack of focus. Number six, covetousness. That means eyes on everything and getting nothing. Eyes on everything but getting nothing. They are result of lack of focus. Number seven, when you find yourself always stumbling and falling into traps, or making mistakes that are avoidable. Mistakes that should have been avoided. Repeating the same error in life over and over again. They are all result of lack of focus. And like I said, there are four main reasons why focus are always lost. There are four main reasons. Number one, the attack of the enemy on your eyes. The attack of the devil. There are demons. Their job is to attack your eyes, to distract you. In Jesus' name, the Lord will preserve your eyes. Amen. Say, Lord, preserve my eyes. Protect my eyes. Keep my eyes single. Keep my eyes what? Sing God. Amen. I say amen. Number two, when you are trying to hear something at the same time you are looking, you will lose your focus. When you are trying to look and hear at the same time, and what you are hearing is not, is not the same, is not, is contrary to what you are looking at, you will lose your focus. You are trying to look at something and you are hearing something else at the same time from somebody else, you lose your focus. Your hearing and your sight must be one. Amen. When you are in church, when you are listening to the preacher, you are listening to message, amen, set your eyes on the pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. If your seeing and your hearing are not synonymous, you will lose your focus. If you are trying to go somewhere and somebody is telling something different than where you are going, you take your eyes away from where you are going. You are hearing your mother at home, your father at home, there is this at home. That is why the devil always likes to whisper to you in church, to tell you things contrary to what you are hearing because he's trying to steal your focus. Remember the woman that was following Jesus in the crowd. She set her eyes on the Lord. Amen. She touched the garment. They tried to distract her, but she won't take her eyes away from Jesus. And she eventually touched the Lord. Many were thronging, but she touched. In Jesus' name, you will reach your goal. I said you will reach your goal. As you reach your goal, and I hear louder, amen. And number three, when you naturally lack vision in life, you cannot have focus. If your life is going nowhere, you don't have anything at the end of this year that you are looking at, then why must you be focused? Focus and vision are two different things. Focus is needed because you have a vision. You have a vision, and it's very powerful. It helps you to reach your goals. It's so easy to reach your goal once your eyes are on it. It's called the power of reception. What you are looking will eventually come to you. What you are looking will transform you. Jacob practiced that. I'm going to show you in the scriptures how Jacob was able to transfer the wealth of labor into his arm by making those cattle conceive exactly the way he wanted them to conceive. Your conception, your transformation, your reception, your imagination, they are all in the power of your focus. Somebody say amen. Say another amen. amen. Now I am going to read some scriptures for you. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Hebrews 12, 2. 
Say in the name of Jesus, I set my eyes on the Lord. I set my eyes on the Lord. So my transformation, my reception, my expectation, imagination, my ability to cope in the dark depends on my focus. Say so my imagination, my transformation, my reception, my expectation, and my ability to cope when life seems dark depends on my, on my focus. Somebody say amen. amen. Hebrews 12 verse 2. Let's all read together. I say looking unto who? Jesus. One more time. Looking unto who? To tell your friend, look unto Jesus. Say looking unto Jesus. Amen. At all times, look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus means reading your Bible. Amen. It means asking questions of Jesus. It's setting your eyes on the Lord. On the Lord. What will the Lord do now? What is the Lord saying now? Keep your eyes on Jesus. If you're going to overcome storm, Overcome distraction, set your eyes on Jesus. That's why most of the time when Jesus comes into the midst and want to minister to people, they will take their eyes away from strangers. They will say, Don't listen to it. They say, Be not afraid. Look at me. Amen. Be not afraid. So don't worry about whatever is happening around you. Just keep your eyes on Jesus because your healing is coming from Him. But once your eyes is of Jesus, it may take some time. It's, and it's so difficult many times to keep people's eyes steady because it's an attack of the enemy. An attack of the enemy. Distraction is so easy. Like I told you, many get so distracted, even in prayer. Even in prayer. The, I mean, what we call focus is the ability to maintain attention. To keep your attention. And usually it's not common with children. It's leadership trait. You have to be trained in it. You have to learn it. If you work with a coach, with a boss, with a father who's successful, they will teach you focus. But if you have missed it, the Holy Ghost can still impart you through focal discipline. Amen. Most of the things we go through in life is God trying to set back our eyes on the goals. Our eyes on the goal. Because many of us are so distracted by what we are going through or what is going through us or what is happening around us. Whatever is happening around you should not take your eyes away from where you are going. Just keep your eyes steady. Amen. But it's not easy. It's not easy. It's delicate. I mean, your eyes have to respond to pain. Your eyes have to respond to pain. And you are fighting somebody. You are, and it gives you a blow in your back. And you are not supposed in training to take your eyes away from your, from, from your enemy or the person you are fighting. Because one blow is designed to take your eyes away from him so he can give you the, the upper cut. So once he gives you a blow on the left side, and then he's already set his hand on, the, on, on that side to give you the upper cut, he's expecting you to look at where the pain is. So he can bend your head and say, look. As you look at where the pain is, the second cut comes. So you learn that in fighting. So once you are fighting somebody, don't take your eyes off. Even if you are feeling the pain in your back, don't say, I want to check my back. No, just keep your eyes. Amen. On the target. The second you take your eyes away, a little, a little, a little sleep in your focus can be the end of the game. That will never be your portion in Jesus' name. Say, oh Lord, keep my focus. Lord, keep my eyes on the target of my destiny. Say it again, Lord, keep my eyes on the vision, on the target of my life in Jesus' name. Yes, voices will come, pain will come, 
the sun will come, but do not mind them. Do not mind them, no matter how tough, no matter how you feel the pain, neglect it. Amen. Just say, Lord, I'm going somewhere. Hallelujah. And I'm going to get to where I'm going. As soon as you keep your focus, all those pain will die. Somebody say, Amen. The power of focus will mitigate the pain. Because you, there's something said before you. There is something better ahead of you. Amen. There's something higher you are going to. That focus will keep you energized. Stronger to overcome the pain of the present time. In the name of Jesus, I see your total recovery. I see you on the other side. I see you on the other side. Keep looking at the other side of destiny. You will get there. You will reach it. It shall be done in Jesus' name. Can I hear louder? Amen. Looking unto Jesus, the author of our faith, and is also the word, the finisher. May the Lord finish your faith for you in Jesus' name. Not just start it, the author and word finisher of our faith. Who for what? The joy that was set before him. He endured the pain. He endured destruction. He refused to listen to mockers. He was set on where he's going. He despised the shame and is um, sitting now at the right hand of God. Amen. In the throne of heaven. I pray for somebody out there in the name of Jesus. Uh, you will be seated on your throne. You will reach your goal. Amen. Keep your focus. Keep your focus. Look at Acts 13 verse 9. Acts 13 verse 9. In Acts 13 verse 9, there was a man there called Eli, eh, 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 the sorcerer. Eli, man, the sorcerer, that was trying to distract the deputy from hearing Paul preach. The guy, I mean, the guy came in with trying to say something different than what Paul was preaching. So he came in as an agent of Satan to speak something contrary to what the man was hearing. And so Elimas came, he, was, he, he, he started distracting the governor, the deputy governor, from the preaching of Paul. But when Paul got tired and was going to minister to him, Look at how Paul used the power of focus to transfer the anointing. In Acts chapter 13, verse 9, let's all read together. The Bible said, Then what Saul, who also is called what Paul, fear with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. He set his eyes on him. Amen. I say he set his eyes on him. When he set his eyes on him, he wanted to release power. He wanted to release the anointing. He wanted to decree power and the anointing to go to a place to direct the anointing. To direct the anointing. If you keep, if you set your eyes on something. Amen. You can channel all your energy towards that thing. You can channel your power, your grace towards it. It's called the law of attraction and rejection. If you look at somebody continually and you set your eyes on each other, something will flow. Something will flow. There is something in you that is called the anointing. That is called grace, that is called power. You got to use your eyes to release it. So Paul set his eyes on him. He wasn't afraid of eye contact. He looked eyeball to eyeball. He kept looking until the guy's eyes were shifting, shifting. And then he spoke. And then he released the anointing. Somebody say amen. You see the same process in Acts, I mean, 3, verse 4. You see the same process. Of how the ministers release the power within them. They set their eyes. You see it also in Acts 14. When Paul perceived somebody had faith, he set his eyes on him. And then he ministered. Amen. 
So if you are going to be able to channel the grace in you, the power in you towards something, set your eyes on it. Say, set your eyes on it. Set your eyes on the goal. You speak to your child, you are going to make it. When it comes back home, you will make it. You are the heir. You are releasing the grace. Amen. You are releasing the anointing. Speak to your stomach. You are healed. You are healed. You are releasing. It's called powerful cause. Whatever is in you can be released through your eyes. Amen. Whatever attraction is in you can be released through your eyes. Whatever hatred in you can also go through your eyes. Set your eyes on it. Amen. And speak to him. And then release power. Somebody say amen. So in the name of Jesus, I will use the power of focus to change things. To release the anointing. To release power. So you see, and after he spoke, look at verse 10. Verse 10. After he set his eyes, then Paul spoke. Let's read. And he said, Oh, you fool of what subtlety or mischief, thou child of the devil. He was speaking to somebody. He wasn't speaking to the ear. No, he had somebody in mind. He said, eyes on him. He said, you child of the devil. He knew I need to set my eyes on him, on him to release the power of God from within and, ab- from within and from above towards something. Many of us are praying without target. We pray what they call general, general prayer, everlasting prayer, you no know, uh, gathering prayer. You know, Heavenly Father, bless, bless Ajax. Heavenly Father, heal everybody in Ajax. It will never be answered. No, yes, God will bless Ajax, but where is he going to? Where is he going to? That's why you have got to be specific. The governor of Egypt, what is his name? Lord, heal him. Set your eyes. Amen. You go into a place, you are trying to open a door, you see the secretary, set your eyes on her. Set your eyes on her. And if your eyes cannot be steady, say, Lord, keep my eyes steady. You set your eyes on her. And then she's trying to avoid you. She turns back on her. Suddenly she will get your attention. She will know you are looking for something. Then she will say, Excuse me, sir, what do you want? I need to talk to you, ma'am. You have sent something to her. I need to talk to you. Okay, I'm here to see your circuit, to see your master, to see your boss, to see the GM. Can you help me, ma'am? All right, that's what I can do. You send favor. Amen. But use your eyes. When you are there, you are timid. You are there, you, are, you don't know, you, you, you can't you can, you can hold eye contact. You can't communicate whatever is in you. You cannot maintain eye contact. You can't communicate whatever is in you. You are spying you and not in you. Use your eyes. Amen. I've been in a situation back home in Africa. She was a witch. I set my hands on her. I knew it. I knew it. And you know what time? She started to manifest. Because why? As I was looking at her, something was flowing through me. Somebody say, Amen. Your eyes are very powerful. May God use them today in Jesus' name. May God keep them steady. It's called focus. 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 When you are doing deliverance, when you are ministering deliverance, and the demon is trying to distract you, and you look, you look very, un- you are not fettered, you are not distracted. You keep looking to highs. You keep looking to highs. Then suddenly, something will begin. The demons get jittery. As soon as they get jittery, they start to manifest. And cause them out. How to? Amen. Because once you set your eyes on them and you look, the demons know you know that you know that they are there. They know you know 
that you know they are there. That is how you see the ministers of God ministers in the Old Testament. They use their eyes to communicate, to release, and to receive. Your eyes are very powerful. It's not just for you to see. It's for you to see and to receive. Somebody say amen. What you are seeing will come to you through your focus. Steady focus. Steady focus on your target, on your goal, on where you are going, on what you want to do. And you see the power around you walk together. It's, it's called convergence. Amen. You are focused in life. And you will get there. Even if you don't pray, your focus can get many things happening around you. Amen. Just focused. Just focused. And if the enemy is going to get you down, he will steal your focus. He must steal your focus. He must keep you distracted. You have to look here and there. And then they come to next year. But I pray for Chogi. Your focus will not be stolen in Jesus' name. Look at Acts 3, chapter 4. Acts 34. This is the story of Peter trying to minister to the man by the bed of a gate. The first thing they told him, look on us. Amen. Look on us. Let's communicate through the wise. There's something I want to give you. Keep your focus on me. You can't impart anybody in life who's not looking at you. It's not possible. Whatever I have will come to you if you set your eyes on me. It's a natural law. You can't be blessed in any class, in any teaching if your eyes are divided. You have two eyes, but you are supposed to see as one. If you have two eyes looking at two different things, it's, it's a problem, it's a disease. But two eyes, being able to see as one, is called a power focus. Somebody say amen. So God gave us two eyes, but you are never supposed to see as one. Your eyes must be single. You find that in Luke 11. Your eyes, because the power of the light that you will receive into your system depends on how you can convert your eyes into one place. He said, great is your light. Great is your light. If your eyes be single. How can eyes be single? Two eyes be single. It's called focus. You are looking at one thing. Focus is the ability to maintain the principle of one thing at a time. Amen. David said, one thing have I desired. One thing. Psalm 27 verse 4. One thing. This year, one thing. Oh Lord. For one thing, take me to the next. One thing. One thing. You have 10 prayer points at the end of the year. How many answered? From one prayer point, you can get many. Somebody say, Amen. One thing have I desire. One thing I desire, and that I will seek after. One thing. In John chapter 9, the man that was healed uh, of blindness, they came to him and said, Tell us whether the guy who healed you was a savior was a lord or not he said listen all of you you can bother about all that but for me there's only one thing I know he said one thing I know I was blind but now I see I see that amen one thing Paul said one thing Philippians 3 
I desire. Forgotten all those things which are behind me. But this one thing I desire, I long after, I run after. Focus will make you focus on one thing at a time. You go into a place, you're looking for so many things at the same time. You may end up getting out, I mean, getting nothing out of that same place. There are many people in the land of wealth, the land of wealth, who are struggling. They can't get nothing in the land of wealth because of lack of cocos. They want to do everything. Jack of all trade, master of none. That will never be your portion in Jesus' name. That attitude is why many lose in life. Because you do not have a target. You are not focused. You are not focused. Every time you open your, t or your internet, there are many jobs you want to do. Oh, I, 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 I learned a little lesson. I wasn't trained in focus all my life. I was so intelligent to try to do many things at the same time. But I learned what I'm teaching today. I learned it from the Holy Ghost. I put my money, a lot of money, into many things. I love it, and almost nine out of ten of them fell. And it's a lot. But I wanted to get this, get that, and I put little, little over the place. But God said, no, it doesn't work that way. Put it on one. Amen. Hallelujah. So I pray that God will give you the ability to maintain focus in Jesus' name. Amen. Say louder. Amen. What is focal discipline? That is what helps you to maintain your focus. The ability, because it is delicate to maintain focus. So you need training. You need training. What is focal discipline? It's the ability to concentrate. Say concentrate. Ability to maintain attention. Number three, ability to keep your eyes steady. And number four, to keep your two eyes as one. And five, practicing one thing at a time principle. Let me come, come again. Ability to concentrate. Say amen. Ability to, con to maintain your attention to keep your eyes steady to keep your two eyes seen as one and practicing one thing at a time say in Jesus name I receive that impartation of discipline focal discipline from the Holy Spirit Say, Holy Spirit, keep my eyes steady. Say it again, keep my eyes on the focus of my life. Keep my eyes, keep my eyes on my destiny goals. Keep my eyes on my vision. Keep my eyes on where I am going. Holy Spirit, teach me focal discipline. Help me, O oh Lord, to overcome the weakness of my eyes. Every log, every log, every, log, every beam, every beam in my eyes, Holy Spirit, Spirit, take them out. Take them out. Any attack, any attack on my eyes, on my eyes, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, rebuke, rebuke them, rebuke them, rebuke them, rebuke them in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, keep my eyes on you, keep my eyes on you throughout this year, throughout this year, throughout this month, throughout this month, throughout this week, throughout this week, keep my eyes on the world, keep my eyes on the world for the month, for the month, the word for the month. 
word for the moment is in love of, is God. Love of God. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, keep my attention, keep my attention on, the love of God. on the love of God. This month, this month so, I can reach, so I can reach it. I can reach it. I can, reach I can it. take it. I can, take it. I can possess, it. I can possess it. it. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. my transformation. My transformation. My transformation. My reception. My reception. My reception. My reception. My transformation. My transformation. My imagination. My imagination is in the power. Is in the power of my focus. Of my focus. My success. My success is in the power. Is in the power of my focus. Of my focus. Oh Lord, train me. Train me. Discipline my heart. Discipline my heart to be steady. To be steady. Oh Lord, by the Holy Ghost, I reject. Reject. Every voices, Every voices of, destruction. of destruction, I reject, I reject voices, voices of destruction. Of destruction. Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, discipline my heart. Discipline Somebody my pray right now.